In this video, we will go over the roof framing, and this is going to involve roof trusses. And even though I would have changed the direction on the roof trusses, I understand, because the gable is going to be located at the front door. But if you would have changed the direction of the roof trusses, it probably could have saved you a few dollars, because I would imagine the roof trusses wouldn't have used as much lumber, would have been cheaper to make. So if you are going to build a house like this and you don't need the gable wall to be located where the front door is, then consider that option. Let's go ahead and put all of our backing in, put all of our blocks in. You can see where the ceiling backing here, we have a two by four, two by six over here, all of our blocks. And then we have a two by six over here. It's sticking past a little bit so that we can pick up the corner nailing here for the drywall. And it's going to do so on the other side. And I wanna point out the location of the roof truss bracing. And over here, it's not gonna be a problem, but over here, it's not always gonna be a good idea to place the backing over a wall because it's gonna be something else that the plumber, the electrician, or the heating and air conditioning contractor is gonna to need to drill through or notch. So again, this right here might've been better if it was over here, and to fix this, all we would need to do would be to change the location of the backing. Have this one over here, and then have this one on the right side. Or just simply move the bracing over a little bit. And for those of you who have been watching my videos for a long time, I don't think I ever came across that problem in one of my videos. And of course, the backing on the front wall here. Now, another thing you can do to get some additional lateral support for your top plates would be to put a few more nails in this board here and make sure that the brakes don't line up with the top plate framing brakes below. And I'll show you what I'm talking about a little further on in the video. And of course our ridge blocks, and I know somebody asked me if they were really necessary, but it does provide you with perimeter nailing and engineers wanna see that. And they would love to have the tops of the blocks shaped like we've done here. Let's go ahead and add our fascia board and give you an idea of how the blocking goes all the way through here. And if you noticed, I don't have any hardware in the video. If you need to see it, let me know in the comment area. And another view of the backing there. And of course, our lookouts and our shaped blocks again. Go to the inside and just kind of want to give you an idea what we're looking at here for the ceiling backing. I like to have at least an inch and a half of exposure here on the bottom. And I would imagine an inch would be about the least amount you would want to have. And next up, let's go ahead and head over to our framing break. This is what I was talking about. You don't want these breaks to line up. You could just simply move it over to here or move it over to here. And I've never heard an engineer mention this, but I think it could make a difference if you were in an earthquake or a hurricane. And of course, our truss brace, usually gonna have two 16D nails going through the top into the bottom cord here. And let's go ahead and keep going around the room here. And again, I'm just kind of giving you an idea of what it would look like from the bottom here the backing for the drywall, of course. And you might even be able to get a few more pointers on something else. Now, I didn't put a one by four top plate on here. I usually do, but I'm starting to see a lot of trusses sitting on top of the top framing plate, where when I was building homes 20 years ago in California, we had to use a one by four top plate for any walls that were running perpendicular to the roof trusses. And you can see here where this is hanging over a little bit so we could get some drywall nailing over here. Next up, let's go ahead and head over to the other side. And of course the drywall backing here, a two by six over a two by four wall is only going to give you a one inch exposure here, but uh, a two by six, Seems to work pretty good over two by four walls, just as long as it's actually centered over the wall. Because if it isn't centered, you might have an inch and a half on one side and a half inch on the other side. Another view of the wall there. Next up, let's go ahead and head over to the front and then go ahead and pan out here. Now, I also need to put a soffit in here. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. 
And I believe this soffit has more to do with a fire rating because they're asking for two blocks here or one block in a piece of fire rated drywall. And I personally don't recommend using drywall in this area because if you ever had a roof leak, it would be absorbing water like a son of a gun and could fall apart. And since I believe this is for fire prevention, you wouldn't have any vents here. However, this might require you to drill holes in some of these blocks. Otherwise, you're not going to get any ventilation in the soffit. And I would imagine that this would have roof dormer vents installed in it. And don't think for a moment that burning embers cannot go through your roof dormer vents because they can. Unless, of course, they have a dormer vent where that doesn't happen. And if you know of that, feel free to share it with us in the comment area, along with any of your other thoughts about this video. And thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, let us know by hitting the thumbs up button or letting us know in the comment area.